All right, so we've already processed a few deer this morning, so the table's already nice and bloody, ready to go. But we sanitize everything in between, between processing every time. Um, so you wanna make sure you clean everything behind yourself. But this is just blood from current deer going on. So we're gonna start with a back strap here and how I trim it off and what I do. It's nice to have a fillet knife handy. It's also nice to have a straight blade that's really heavy duty handy. And then I actually use this knife. You can use one of these others to trim, but I use this knife for, for my first trimming. Um, so first thing you do here is you start with taking off anything that you see that is sinew or fat. Um, there's actually a seam kind of right in here and you wanna cut and get this loosened up. So there's the first piece to separate away. Now, this is not necessarily throw away. This one has a little bit of um, sinew here at the front. I'll scrape it back a little bit and I'll cut just the sinew off and then I'll put this in for burger. So this little piece of sinew, you don't wanna burger, make burger out of really tough sinew. Next thing I do here is trim this little another piece of sinew off. Now, these little bitty spots, you wanna get all of this off. So anything that is discolored or has sinew or fat, you want it nice and cleaned off. These are very small and they actually are totally fine to grind. It's perfectly good meat. You're just trying to clean up your back strap to make it. So this is his grinding meat. This will all be turned into burgers, so that's, that's why you're putting it in there. Yep, so you're not wasting it. So trim off enough to make it to where it's very clean. You do not want it to be, again, burger. Now, on the back side of this here, you have a large piece of sinew here on the back side. That's the hardest piece to remove without wasting back strap. Um, first thing I do is I come along this edge and I cut this thicker edge right here off. This gets in your way to fillet it, which is what I'm fixing to do. That piece right there gets in your way when you start trying to fillet. I'll turn this, I'm right-handed, so I'm coming from this end here. This is very similar to filleting a fish. You're gonna start in a little high here, and you're gonna go down to the table and flatten out with your knife. And then you're gonna check yourself and see if you got it behind all the sinew. I got a little bit here I didn't get. Bring that down. I should be able to get behind all the sinew. Maybe come up and then back down and flatten out. And you can go like this periodically and check yourself, make sure you're filleting where you want. Now, that piece right there, I have a little bit left right here. I'm just gonna trim this instead of trying to fillet it. It's a lot harder to trim than it is to fillet if it's a large piece. Probably save a lot more meat, huh? Yes. Filet. See right here, I have a little bit of, of sinew. I wanna cut that out. You want this piece completely pure. That's the best way to put it. All the way around, there should be nothing on it. When you go to cook this, that's a prime, prime steak. Really I will show you how, to, how we cook that steak later too, cause the best piece. All right, so now you have your filleted piece of sinew laying here. This is actually a cool fact, this, the sinew that you would use like a really tough piece of sinew and you would dry it out after you scrape all this meat off and you tie your arrows and your tomahawks and such with that. Um, so I take this right here and this is really good meat. This is actually probably better than your back strap. Um, and I do like one inch at a time, I scrape this getting started here in a little bit of a pain, but when, you wanna turn your knife blade a little bit opposite of the sinew so you're not cutting it. Opposite being like this and scrape this direction. If you're going like this, you're actually gonna find that it's gonna cut your sinew if you have a sharp knife. So you wanna go like this and peel it off. And it's only about a 16th of an inch thick Okay, so those uh, meat pieces that he's shaving off, we call them shavings, little shavings. Um, you could go throw them into burger to save them, 
but it's like a fajita meat. It's so thin and it's absolutely delicious. We just throw it into a really hot skillet and fry it up. So yum. When you share is what you end up with that you took off. If you tried to trim that off, it will take you a long time and you'll discover that it wastes a lot of meat and your back strap doesn't come out nice and smooth and clean. So fillet it instead. That's usually how I do it. Okay, so boys, this sinew is super strong and Native Americans would have used it to make thread and string to like tie stuff. And it's super easy to do. So what you take is you take the sinew and you lay it down and all these pieces of meat on here, that's wrong side, but take all these off and you can just... So you're gonna clean it. Clean it all off and then, super easy, you just spread it out and let it dry. Then when it's done, I'll show you, it's like a crispy streak and you just pull it apart and it comes straight. So here's what it looks like finished. It's super clean and it took me a couple minutes and it's just super easy to do and fun to do. All right, so Colt is fixing to show us how we cut up a hindquarters. Um, we start by turning the hindquarter with the cut off side down. If there's blood, <clears throat> you wanna wipe it with a paper towel first, get it kind of dried out, correct? Yep. And then, now show us where you start and how you work You're gonna this. You're gonna start right on this white line and there's a crease right there. You can see that I'm not even cutting into the meat. There are just bubbles that I'm kind of cutting through. And it's super cool that you can do this. It keeps your meat looking nice. And it just, it's like a guideline to show you where to cut. So you're gonna come right through, down through here. So what he's cutting off there can be used as a roast, or you can make it into jerky, or you can use it into steaks. Um, any of that, you can make it into stew meat. Lots of good uses. It's a high quality cut right there that he's cutting uh, out. So you. So you can see here that it's kind of flipping out of this like notch or crevice it was in. Basically it's a separation, correct? You're just separating yeah. it from the other pieces of meat. <clears throat> and then there's another roast right here under it that we call the inner roast. So almost that whole roast came out just by separating seams, correct? Yep. Right there. That's your first piece. <clears throat> We're also gonna show how we trim this completely clean just like we do the back straps. Go ahead, Colt, keep going. So right here, there's a seam under this. You can kind of see that it's going under there. Mm -hmm. And you wanna take that out and then Start right in here. This is a little bit bloody, but we will trim that off when. You can also take a paper towel and kind of dry that out as well, just like we do when we get it out of the, when it's bloody on the outside. It's kind of, you're just like cutting out a square. Okay. There you go. Make it a little easier on you. All right, so our those are the two roasts right there. Um, you'll trim all of this bloody off and all of the fat and sinew off. I'll show you how we do that. These muscle groups here, this could be used for a roast as well. We don't because we have plenty of this other cut. Um, so we don't use this. This is a tighter muscle group right here. We make it into burger. So now he's going to show you what we do on this. And you want to come right in here, not too deep. And you There's another separation see point. Separation right there. And you see. Gonna come on around right now i'm just cutting off this stuff but now then once you get in there bone pretty deep in here follow into the bone and once you hit that bone you're just gonna turn your knife sideways and start cutting sideways and you can see that i just you're gonna cut. trace the bone basically all the way around the leg then you gotta go right in there Oh, you got a little Ooh. deep there. Got the bone right there. That's one of the joints. You just trace this bone. There's actually another piece of meat right here on the back side, but you can see this bone right here. <clears throat> the 
you basically will just trace it and you'll do the same thing you'll cut this out actually and trace similar to the bone trace here so, um, also have a piece of burger here on the top yet that we'll get off and clean off yeah. let him cut it right now there go. That'll, and that'll have to be cleaned has a lot of stuff in it here's a piece Colt. cut this one here off so this one here so we can see a clean bone you want to start right here and then right behind the ball joint and you want to come right through here and you want to see that white you can see the bone. This is bone again right here. So basically there's no meat left on this bone here. This is a joint and it has a little bit of meat, but it's a lot of tough, sinewy. Super hard to get that off of here because... Yeah, it's got a lot of sinew and toughness to it. And there's a burger. And now you can see that that's a clean bone. There's a little bit of meat on the side, but that's... Too deep. Then... Too deep, I think. Maybe not. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, you got it. right in here this up that's the outside piece of that flank cut that off that's burger and then we have one more piece this is a big old leg meat chunk right here you kind of just cut a u out of this because it has a lot of toughness to it you kind of just cut in take a chunk out of it you almost need a little bigger knife there buddy a little bit small smaller makes it a little less likely he cuts himself though you can cut a little piece off of that yet uh -huh. <clears throat> he's got her pretty much done there's a little bit of trimming yet he can do right here get a little piece off of this but pretty much cleaned off he's gonna finish up just a few little cuts all right, so I'm going to show you what we do with these roasts, the trimming part. It's very similar to the back straps, but you're trimming instead of filleting. The back strap's the only one you will fillet. All right, come on in here and just show them what we got. So this here is bloody. It's getting trimmed off because it's bloody and a little bit discolored. <clears throat> As you can tell, there's a lot of fat and sinew on that piece there. This piece right here could be a roast, but it's a little bit um, discolored. So I'm actually gonna use it for burger. There's a um, blood vessel right in here that discolors this if it is aged. You can see how it's brown. But it's not bad, it's just a little discolored. We're gonna use it for burger. This here's our more prime cut right here that we have. Burger. This here's scrap. So this piece here, that's clean enough for a roast, except for maybe right here. If you're gonna make steaks out of it and you wanna slice this up, you might wanna trim this little bit of fat off right here. But you could actually still make steaks out of that. Um, this piece here, we're going to trim yet, has a little bit of sinew right here and a little bit of blood. If the stuff you're trimming off is gross, don't put it into burger. If it's just, um, not clean, like as far as it has a little bit of fat in it, then you can throw it into burger. So you kind of have to decipher that as you're doing it. Do you want to eat that piece like this here? I don't want to eat this. This has kind of bloody sinew stuff that's scraps um i don't want to eat the scraps that look like that so all right that one there is ready it had a, a little bit extra trimmed off of it that would be a roast about a pound and a half roast or you can make it into burger i mean in steak or stew meat this one here is going to get the same treatment. We're just going to trim this off. We're going to trim all of this off. And it's going to be a little bit thinner than the previous one. You also want to trim this side off really gently across the top of here. I usually kind of just start by peeling it off as tight as I can to the 
stuff I'm taking off. That can be burger. I don't mind eating that. It's clean. It's just a little tougher. Um, that discolored fat, I don't want my meat. All right, so there's that, nice and clean. All right, we are gonna show you how we do the shoulders. Um, I'm gonna quickly sharpen my knife. You run it on it. We have an electric sharpener. What? We have an electric sharpener. Yes, a work sharp electric belt sharpener is awesome for sharpening knives. Okay, so first thing you do here, the front of the shoulder, I showed you guys how that we have pockets of fat with a gland in them. This piece right here is gonna be one of those such pieces right here. This piece has a little bit of, tiny little bit of outside of meat, but if you cut through this meat, it's straight up fat, and inside that fat is a gland deposit. So you can cut this meat off of here if you'd like. Um, it's not a huge waste to leave it either because it's not very much. It's a very small piece compared to the fat deposit that it's on. We get that out of our way. Fat, gland, back in the burger. The entire shoulder usually goes for burger unless you have something where you wanna cut some shoulder roasts and you wanna do something different out of it, but most of it usually goes for shoulder. You're gonna feel a bone. Again, we lay it cut side. This was attached to the deer. Cut side down. I start right here on this bone and I cut the side the bone on the front side. You can see that that white thing is a bone that he's cutting side. Yeah, this is a bone right here. And I get down here to the shoulder blade part and you have a little bit of flat on this outside. You can see this little flat shelf. And then once you get past that shelf, you cut on in. This is kind of the front of the shoulder right here that I'm cutting off. You cut too far in, you'll hit bone right there. Yeah, this is bone. You can hear it. Looks like there's a little bit of meat, but that's actually bone too. Right there on the front. So that's the front of the shoulder. You take off a small chunk off of it. Sliver. Goes straight into burger. Now I usually take this outside layer off here because just so I'm getting separation and I can clean it better. It's not really. Um, even in your burger, you don't want to put blood. You don't want to put discolored stuff if you can help it or too much sinew. Like that's kind of like a bloody membrane. Yeah, membrane is the other thing you don't want to put in there too much of. You can have a little bit of membrane, but this gooey stuff that has air pockets is membrane. This has a large piece of fat. Now, this piece of fat up here at the front, discolored, has kind of some membrane look. But the rest of this is not super bloody and not super discolored. What I'm gonna do is slice through it and kind of look at the inside of it, make sure it's kind of clean. I don't mind having a little bit of that fat as long as it's got a nice clean look to it. Really clean and... Yeah, you want good clean looking fat if you're gonna put fat in your burger. Now, you come back to this shoulder bone again. You're gonna come in here, and you're gonna cut kind of flat against the shoulder right here. Come in right here. That's where the shoulder blade is. Again, I'm on the bone, on the opposite side from where I just cut. You can see that it's just flat bone. It wouldn't hurt if you're gonna do this and you've never done it before to look up the shape of a shoulder bone um, off of a deer. A shoulder blade it's super hard to navigate because or you can just kind of cut by feel as you come through here because you can see that it's flat but it has ridges in it that's correct it's not just a flat piece 
On the back side here, you will actually have a piece as well. Since we flipped it over, I'll go ahead and cut that off. It's not very big. Here goes that piece. Um, sometimes flipping it over gets you a different angle. You want to flip it as needed. This here, I'm going to actually cut off right here. We'll cut that in half yet. There's that part. Good. Junk. All right, next, you have this bone right here. It's kind of the in-between bone. This is the membrane that I was talking about right here. This is stuff. She just It adds flavor, and you don't want it to add flavor to your meat, this membrane. Gross bloody, flavor. It adds bad flavor. That's correct. Deer flavor, wild game flavor. That piece there is ready for burger. Now, grab this with your hand. You're going to feel this elbow. Cut in right in front of the elbow at a little bit of an angle down towards the hock until you hit the bone. Come up the bone. This thing is jumping around a little bit. And that's going to fillet off. A little bit of trimming right here on the front. Also have a little piece here left. On the other side. There and there. You can see the clean bone. This here is a very tough portion of the deer. The front hock. I cut in right here like this until I hit bone. I go up the leg. You'll kind of feel the bone as you're coming up. You cut that off. You want to split that in half. So when you go to grind it, it's less tough and sinewy. That's it. Lots of bone. Shouldn't be any meat on it. Hollow sound means that you got it. Ooh. Tell us what you're doing. So we are grinding all the ground meat that we just All the burger. Off. All the burger. Yep. This has got to be the kids' favorite job. They love this job. So this is a LEM uh, Model 780 head size 12. I think it's a, like a one horse or maybe a little bit bigger. Might even be a, a one and a half horse grinder. All right, we are going to show you guys how we vacuum seal. These um, vacuum sealers are a must have. This is our back strap from 2022. We write that on. So next year we come to it, we know that we have backstrap from the previous year. I usually take a whole backstrap per bag. And if you have a full, say five people, this is probably would feed maybe four. So if you have five, you're gonna pull out two of these instead of one. Um, I turn them like this right here. And it seems to work the best to get them sealed. I want air to come all the way around. And it'll suck these back corners out before it gets tight. That's my preferred way to do it. This is a really handy automatic food saver um, vacuum sealer. And so it's done. We can actually take another bag and it seals it while you cut it. So you can actually go like that. It's sealing the next bag. So it's sealing. And this one's ready to go for the next round. So um, we always like to use as much of the deer as we can. And the deer carcass is good protein for animals. So what we'll do is we'll give to the dogs first and let the dogs chew on it a lot and get all the big chunks of meat off. And then we give to the chickens and the chickens pick it clean because they can get all the little bits of meat off the bone. Also a great protein soy source. You can see that they're not quite sure about it yet, but they will love it when they figure it out.